<laughs> Here, look at the, the toaster, right? Sorry. Okay. Hey, let me fire this guy off. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm here with uh, Daniel M Musner. Yes. Close enough. Good enough. Yes. But, uh, good enough for United. Um, <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and uh, we're recreating an interview we did yesterday because of some uh, audio uh, technical difficulties. So, um, first I want to say thank you. Um, yesterday, when we spoke, it was, uh, we hadn't done the banquet. So, let me also say, uh, I thought you did an excellent job last night. <laughs> thank you so much. That was uh, a lot of fun. <laughs> it was succinct and uh, very... Uh, very well put together. Glad so you liked it. <laughs> continue to think you're a bad public speaker and you'll be fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, I, I wanted to talk about the, the things that you're doing for uh, the Amiga community. I mean, obviously, because of last night's banquet speech, which I recommend people to watch, you know, clearly you're very uh, emotionally invested in Amiga, as we all are, yeah, for whatever reasons. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we talked yesterday, and maybe we talk again about the, the Tower 57 project. Mm -hmm. So, how did you get involved with uh, the, the bringing Tower 57 to the Amiga? Well, um, there was this kick-starting campaign around October 2015, if I remember correctly. Um, and it actually wasn't about the Amiga, it was simply about the game. And um, most Amiga users probably uh, uh, heard of the game nevertheless because it simply looked like Chaos Engine and so many of us wanted to um, uh, support it s to play it on the PC after all but uh, there was one guy at least uh, Kumon from Wolfsburg who um, got in touch with the original guys the Pixwork team who made the, uh, uh, the game um, and he simply asked him if it would be possible to port it to the Amiga. And they said, well, if he would come up with somebody who would do it, why not? So he came to me and uh, I got in touch with uh, Pixwork and, um, well, I asked him some, some uh, technical uh, questions to make sure it's possible. And it uh, seemed to be uh, doable quickly doable actually and so I agreed and um, they extended the Kickstarter by a stretch goal of a uh, thousand euro or yes uh, was, was euro right um, and um, which I should get for, for the port plus 500 uh, euro they would put on top uh, as a bonus uh, by themselves um, yeah and so that was the deal and yeah, the Kickstarter succeeded, and so things uh, yeah. uh, got started. Excellent. And you've done other uh, porting projects, right? Um, what, how do you bring these games from the Windows platform, which is, I'm assuming is the, the primary place that was developed yes. for Wings and, and these others? What's your process to bring them to the Amiga? Um, well, um, yeah, uh, you mentioned Wings. Wings is of course not done yet. Uh, <laughs> just to well make that clear. Wings Battlefield. <laughs> yeah, which Wings, B Wings which Battlefield you did. was a was a private product. And that's uh, so done. Yeah, yeah, of course. Wings Battlefield is done, but it was not port. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but in general, um, um, I'm uh, if you port something like Tower 57 or Wings uh, remastered, you um, no. No, uh, no, 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 they are different. Let's, let's take Tower 57 because that's sure. a PC game and uh, it was more or less done and it was uh, and it existed in source code uh, uh, form. So you take the source code, um, identify the system specific parts, yeah. um, tr um, hope that they are not cluttered around uh, but packed into functions. If they are not, you first functionalize, uh, functionalize them. And then essentially you um, put some if def around, so you, so you say this code sh uh, sh uh, will be compiled um, for PC or in this way for Amiga and so on and so on. You do that for every function. Mm -hmm. First of all, they contain no Amiga specific content, so all you get is uh, nothing. <laughs> it, 
it compiles if you're lucky and then you start filling those functions with splash and in case of tower 57 we are talking about some don't know 100 functions or so that um, have to be processed this way and well some are more complicated than others and yeah but that's the, the general procedure yeah. to get something running and um, that's step one and um, step two in general is um, yeah to 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 optimize it right. um, in case of tower 57 this step took an insane amount of time <laughs> because <laughs> unfortunately the original C code is uh, extremely unoptimized. It was um, designed for the PC. Yeah, it's, it was designed for Th the they PC. Focused they focused on graphics yeah, exactly, and features exactly. and not optimization. They, they didn't, I mean, their plan, their original plan was, wasn't to, to have an Amiga game. So um, they didn't put any effort into this. Um, unfortunately, um, that's what uh, took the longest then um, to uh, get right for the Amiga version because, yeah. yeah. We simply uh, <laughs> need some, uh, uh, yeah, needed to uh, uh, be much faster to be playable. So, so what sort of optimizations did you make for the Amiga? Oh, it was uh, all kinds of stuff. It's, uh, it started with um, with uh, C-specific stuff, like um, if for the technic, for guys who know the techniques behind that. Um, many, many things were were passed around by value. Um, so, so that means that if you have some structure and memory um, of arbitrary complexity or even a structure that holds other structures and so on, you usually pass such big stuff by simply taking the starting address of that yeah, structure and, yeah, and, yeah. and pass that around. So you, on the Amiga you pass around uh, 32 bits um, to pass that information from one point to the other. The, those guys um, pass it by value, which means you have to mem copy the whole structure all the time, which of course is something different. And it becomes worse um, if that structure contains other structures yes. or triggers C++ constructors and such stuff. So it's, uh, it's really, it's that alone um, slowed down everything by a no, insane amount. So the um, first optimization was to move was to pointer based yes, data packs. Yes, but right. you have, I mean, we are talking about, in case of Tower 57, about, I don't know, it's what, 280 source files, something like yeah. that. It's uh, really, really a big project uh, from uh, looking at the code. So, um, and you, you can't just. Um, may do a search and to replace that won't work that will Never break works. everything yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you re really have to take care there are situations where you cannot get around passing uh, by value or you have to add additional logic to make yeah. it possible to use uh, that but um, eventually it was done but it was a, a huge uh, uh, amount of work but when that was only part one then it 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 started to become somewhat playable slowly and uh, there, were, there were tons tons of stuff really it's um i don't know what else uh, i could uh, come up can come up quickly yeah for example the um there was this um this was what one of the last optimizations i did there was the um the path finding for the for the for the for crowds of, of of, of people. Like in the intro, we just yeah, played it. Yeah, right. In, in the, the very intro, there's, there's a big crowd, explosion there's a, of people. There's this crowd of people, and this crowd of people is a it's a specific game internal system, the crowd system. Yeah, and it um, I found that the crowd system was eating up an insane amount of cycles. Really, it it took half of the frame time, um, eventually, and I I search and search and search and eventually found out that the reason for this was the pathfinding. Um, because for every character the pathfinding is triggered and um, it actually tries to find a random but valid path out of the number of all possible paths. So, um, so it's like a chess program. Yeah, every some, little something person, like, like so Can you go three exactly, or four exactly or do you go left yeah, or right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, something like that. And what they did in the original code was to take the visible part of the map and go through every field step by step from left top to bottom right and, and check, check yeah. each, each path from there and 
if that pass was valid, then they stored it in a container and got jumped to the next one, check that, check that. And at the end, they got the container with all the valid pass and selected one out of them by random. Yeah, of course, you can tackle the problem from the other side and in the first place, randomly select one starting position and see if that works. If, it, if not, then select the and next another. random piece and you will, of course, much quicker um, get uh, the same result. Yes. Yeah, because you I only mean, have to calculate yeah, uh, most all valid paths most, most plus a couple of mistakes. Right, and in, in, uh, if you change it the other way, most often you, you have, a, have it at the first try. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Especially in that game where, the, yeah, there's going to be branches that don't work, but it's going to get to a valid path, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, you're done. Yeah. You have so a path for that so starting position. That, that's a good example for, for, an, uh, for, an, uh, for an algorithm that simply yes. was implemented in a very inefficient way. It, it doesn't hurt on the PC. Today's well PCs, no. They are uh, the, the, the bigger machines like yeah. E5, I, uh, I5, I7 or so. Yeah. That's what a core does. Especially an an I7. It. Yeah, yeah. It, it, um, it, um, it is so forgiving. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I can see someone getting started and trying to figure out how to build a pathing algorithm might do this to get to the pathing algorithm. But then once you have the algorithm figured yeah, out, yeah, the optimization yeah, yeah, yeah. is instead yes, of calculating yes, a pick yes, one, yes. pick a yeah, okay. So so let's talk about some of your other work. Um, Tower fifty seven is a three D game. Yes, technically it is. It, is it, it based looks on like pixel art, but it's three D. In uh, technically it is three D, but um, as uh, in terms of it uses OpenGL to get things done on the PC, but um, uh, it only uses OpenGL in a two D fashion. So, um, but technically it is uh, 3D. So does it use the work you've done on MiniGL and Amiga? No, no, no. It's, okay. um, it's uh, purely software and that, that the problem with uh, Tower 57 with the original version was that I couldn't use um, the, uh, the uh, hardware acceleration because of the way the original game uses OpenGL. I see. Um, it, uh, it uses textures that are far too large for say the SAM440 for example, or the actually everything on Amiga OS 4 side that's not Warp 3D, uh, Nova based. Um, and um, it also didn't batch the drawings. So for every tiny particle, um, a separate drawing call is issued. Wow. Um, again, the PC is very, uh, yeah. very um, uh, forgiven, uh, right. forgiving. At, it at took them less time. <laughs> it took them less time to create it and more time for you to optimize it. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah. it's m multiple years they put into it. Yeah. I mean, I started porting that stuff. The, the Kickstarter was end of 2015, yeah. if I remember correctly. Then one year passed, more or less. And end of 2016, I got as uh, subversion access and started with the first simple stuff like what I outlined yeah. at the beginning. And then I put it aside because it turned out they were not done yet. So it, you would have had co constant uh, subversion conflicts right. if I mess around. And so I decided. You had to wait for them to finish. Yeah, I put it aside, and in November 2017, I continued. And then I, 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 I also um, stopped uh, syncing with their subversion because I said, okay, it's now your first stable version. It it's, it's the first version that got released, or the first update, I don't remember exactly. So I now lock it at that point, and um, the Amiga version therefore is, is locked to some version 1977 or whatever, yeah. and the PC version, they, they, they added some, some tiny features, so they are not 100% uh, identical anymore. Right. Do you plan on doing updates? No. No, no, okay, I'm done. I'm done. Frozen. Yes, I'm done. <laughs> Did they have your code? Um, no, no, not um, the first uh, iteration. The first optimizations went into the PC version, like the the um, pointer Pathing reference thing. stuff and so on. Uh, but um, all the the really big and deep optimizations, like that crowd thingy and so on, and the engine specific stuff. Um, uh, is actually only in the Amiga version. So you might do some bug fixes, maybe, but yeah. you're, as far as you're concerned, the project is over. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. a good game. It's a very good game. Yeah, the, uh, at some point, I, I made 
I guess, 11 online updates based on feedback after I released the yeah. um, the Amiga version. But you're not getting many requests now. Like people aren't finding new stuff. So. No, I guess there was one or two, but it was. Um, well, I didn't find a solution to this, um, so yeah, the problem is um, simp most often people came to me and it was, of course, back in the original game. Yes. So, uh, yeah, hmm. at some point I simply said, okay, I'm done with it, okay. bad luck if there's any more. But in general, I'm, um, I'm, I can say that the Amiga version is certainly much more bug-free than the PC version. Um, uh, I found many of bugs and fixed them that are but for sure still in the PC version mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I never synced anymore. I c it's it even if I would have wanted to, it would have been impossible yeah. because it's j the the tra changes are so massively. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's uh, you cannot do it anymore. So let's switch gears and talk about the the work you are doing with Minijil mm -hmm. and and working with Hans Geruder yeah. and other members of the Amiga development community mm -hmm. to improve the state of our art when yeah. it comes to the 3D side of the world. So, if you want to talk a little bit yeah, about Yeah, well, um, um, the, the, uh, the project, I guess, everybody uh, knows about is the OpenGL ES2 wrapper. Uh, wrapper is not the absolute correct term, but for the sake of like this, let's, wrapper, let, right? let's call, call it, uh, let's call it that way, yeah. um, which sits on top of Hans uh, Bob 3D Nova and um, uh, yeah, well, it uh, it uh, progressed very well over the last uh, couple of two years, I guess. It's a, it's a time frame. I don't know when exactly it started, but it's it's some years now, and it became really, really well usable. And it's it's feature complete since long ago, yeah. um, from the OpenGL ES uh, uh, side. Actually, the, the fu all functions were implemented in. If not in version one, then in in one of the uh, early versions, and so Hans um, continued to improve the internal shader language support, which is on Nova's side. And at right now, we are at a point where it's um, possible for guys like Entwickler X or Uno PPC to actually use it for real-world games and whatever. Um, and uh, important to note, it's uh, it's even mature enough now for um, uh, other libraries like GL4ES to use it. Um, GL4ES is a full desktop OpenGL implementation. Something like Blender would use that. Exactly, exactly. Something like a modern Blender would use um, that um, sits on top of OpenGL ES2. Um, Layer, it's a layer, layer, yes, layer, exactly, layer, layer, exactly, layer, exactly. <laughs> um, well, not so many layers, yeah. but uh, you get the idea. And open G uh, GL4ES, um, Roman Cas1E is um, uh -huh. is the guy who prolific, prolific. He's he's not the guy who who wrote this uh, this stuff, uh, this uh, GL4ES library, but he's the one who. Um, who uh, is constantly bugging the <laughs> original <laughs> programmer. I, sorry, I forgot. I don't know the name of, of him <laughs> right now. It's, I guess his handle is Sep1 or so, I'm, but I'm sorry. Not I an Amiga person. No, it's not an Amiga person. GL4ES GL yes, is no Amiga. Uh, right, no, this is the industry thing. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, no, it's an open source project. Right, right. But what I meant um, is it's a general computing infrastructure. Yeah, yes, it's yes, yes. It's, it's what not, yeah. not uh, designed the with Amiga The Amiga project. And, yes. and it's supporting uh, a GL4ES. Yes, yes, yeah. uh, more or less. Uh, I mean, it's actually not much to port because OpenGL ES2 is already a portable library. Yeah. So, um, but of course, um, um, when he tried to get it right, he found bugs in my library and sure. uh, in Hans' library. So he, it, it was very good to have his feedback yes. when doing, uh, when trying this. So we could uh, improve our stuff, and now we are at a point where um, um, uh, even complex games like Quake 3 already work. So, um, but not that port's not, not, not publicly available yet. That's private build. <laughs> that this version of Quake 3 is not available yet. Um, I don't know. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know if if, Cass, uh, if Roman yeah, sure tried it. I have no idea. Yeah. 
Um, but I've seen all sorts of Quake threes come by for classic, and I don't know this the straight yeah. but So what's the next step for this work? Is is there going to be a OpenGL uh, OpenGL 4ES library that sits in like shared objects or? Oh, um, uh, how it. W yeah, it could be the way to go. I, d I don't know. I didn't put too much um, attention into the concrete use for that project, but more sure on works. yeah. I I was interested or, or am interested in uh, in uh, how it works with GL2 uh, GLES2 yeah. with my library. The um, I'm not a gamer, so I don't care. <laughs> actually, if you just write games. Yeah, you don't play them. Yeah, exactly. I guess so. you don't. You don't have time to play them. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> you're too busy writing. Yeah, but uh, um, one one thing. Sorry, Roman. I had no time for feedback uh, the last weeks. Uh, got uh, got married. A child is coming. I have to. Uh, clean when did you get married? Um, one month ago. Wow, congratulations. Well, this is the thanks. first time you're telling us this. Because <laughs> when we were conversing with email, you kept saying girlfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend. Yeah, I have to get used to the other okay. term. <laughs> congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations. No, and uh, we are um, newing up. One? Yeah, we are newing up a room in the house, so it's, uh, okay, very it's a total mess. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's a wonderful experience. <laughs> yeah, I hope. <laughs> Awesome. So what's uh, what's next for you? What are you looking? F what are you going to be doing? Uh, both. Uh, b well, you're going to have a baby, so you're doing nothing after that. <laughs> yeah, it's, months, it's, 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 it's a few months until. Wh what are you working on for 2019? Well, um, uh, let's let's stay in 2018 for now. I I still have to finish Wings Remastered, so um, that's uh, top on the list. But um, it's simply. This polishing and uh, final fixing takes so much time because I really want to release something bug free. Yeah. I don't want it. I mean, it's going to be pressed on CD. Yeah, I have the online updater, but it's always this kind of. Yeah, I don't want to have to do that yet. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, well, yeah, guys, it will come, but um, yeah, it's, it is as it is. Okay. So um, wings, so uh, battle wings, wings, wings remastered. Wings remastered, and um, I also started um, um, quite a while ago uh, mini GL re-implementation. Mm -hmm. um, it will not have any new features. It's uh, meant as a as a it will sit on or it sits on top of Bob CD Nova, and thus um, makes use of shaders for all the vertex and uh, rasterizing stuff. So the thing is. Um, Current Mini JL is uh, using software uh, transform and lighting calculations, and uh, this uh, version, which is compatible, it's a replacement library. Um, Will be fully uh, hardware accelerated. Is fully hardware accelerated, cool. and uh, it's at a point where you can play Quake 3 again with it. It uh, works. It still has some features missing, but mm. uh, uh, yeah, it's it's not much that's missing. Cool. That's going to be great. To yeah, and, and sure. um, Hans, is, uh, he told me this morning that he probably, hopefully, um, has found a solution for one big remaining problem. In we didn't know if it was a Nova or GLS2. It looks like he found something in Nova, and if that's gone, it's, uh, it will both um, help the GL4ES project uh, massively and also my oh good. mini GL to uh, make a big uh, step forward. It's one of the things about Amy West and, and getting together yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. drinking till 4 o'clock in the morning. Definitely, definitely. All sorts of bugs get created and solved at the same <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but more get solved. Yeah. More get solved. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable when we get together face to face. Yes, yes, yes. It's, this, it's sure. far, far, far better than any mail contact or whatever. Yeah. But anyway, um, 2019, you asked. Um, yeah, um, projects I want to do. I'm. Um, I always wanted to do some 68k stuff, uh, so um, I'm currently playing around in my rare spare spare time um, to uh, yeah play around with uh, for with um, um, code for a game for unaccelerated Amiga 500 systems. It's yeah, you can already see something, but it's still uh, still a big. Uh, mm, yeah. So, so the last question I'll ask is mm. something that we didn't ask last time. What Amigas do you have running at home? Mm. What do you have running? Really running or or standing around? 
that, that you can see? Oh, okay. When you enter my bureau, you see to the left the uh, Amiga 1200, which is um, in, in working Pieces. condition. I use it to okay. uh, sometimes play Swift to make a new high score in Swift. Uh -huh. And <laughs> um, to the then comes the X5000, then the um, uh, Tabor, then my uh, standard PC, then comes the um, an old um, G4 for Morphos, uh -huh. then an Aeros machine. On top of that Aeros machine, there is the SEM440 <laughs> um, in a very small yeah. um, thing. And um, at the side of that, there is the SEM460X. Yes, and at the very right is the Amiga 600, which is currently opened up because I had to get out the vampire to for um, I knew there's a vampire involved. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a 600, so you better have a vampire. <laughs> yes. So, um, but um, there are no many monitors I have uh, um, um, KVM, I work keyboard, with. Um, keyboard video yes, switch. with the switch. Uh, so I have two monitors and no mo nothing else. So I um, use uh, Synergy so I can move the mouse from the PC. Ah, nice, nice one. Oh yes, my god, yes. it is. <laughs> so the, there's a tool, a uh, UHD tool, that supports clipboard. Mm -hmm. And it works on OS well, as well. I have to say I, I use a pretty well old school way. The, the KVM switch has yeah. um, USB port and I have a USB stick inside. You copy, so switch. Exactly, exactly, it's exactly. exactly. It's yeah, it's, that's I an mean, I, I got so used to it, yeah, you know. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Okay. Well, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. This is good. For, for bringing me here and yeah. for the interview and everything. I mean, it's a great, great pleasure and honor to be here. Well, uh, hopefully really we'll nice. see you again next year. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll see. see. <laughs> we all have a little one. Maybe two years. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.